Oh, she was. Hello, everyone. I'm just doing some washing and I need to make sure that this has gone live. I love how my Wi Fi doesn't even work with only one object on it. So give me a second. has gone live successfully it's always a positive moment um yep. who knows it's <sighs> lovely my phone has been trying to update for like the last five days and it finally updated today uh, which is amazing because i was kind of getting sick king sick of like it not really working um anyway um thank you all for coming I am just trying to, oh my arms looked very weird just for a second there. Waiting for it to open. Sorry, I need to be able to like see the comments. Whenever you want technology to work. Sorry, so right here. Well, while we wait for the comment section to load on my iPad, if it ever does. Um, thank you uh, for coming today. We will be doing. Just making sure I'm on the Wi-Fi. Yes. Oh, ships. Uh, we will be doing um, watercolor with stencils. Um, we are doing watercolor with stencils because, oh hello Sandy, oh this is the class that you asked for, with the shimmer pots. Now I do not have shimmer pots, however, uh, the metallic watercolors from Mart Mart are very similar, they're just powder based, so you can use them kind of like a Lindy's Mist, when you add water to them in the spray bottle you can spray it, or you can use it like your metallic watercolors and add water to them and um, use them like watercolor. So I'm going to use my metallic watercolors today to show you some techniques with them that you can use with your shimmer pots which will work really well. So the shimmer pots are kind of like you know when you buy the plastic round containers about that big clear on the base and they have like a black lid um, they'll be called shimmer pots. Some of them are called like magic pots magic palettes uh another one was called something else it's basically just a uh, watercolor pigment in a tub either powderized or solid so either one um that you can reactivate which is the idea so then it doesn't get uh like what's it called where it doesn't go off because um you'll actually find with mist that get sold with liquid already in them, they do have an expiry date on them because that pigment has been activated. Um, it does have an expiry date. Whereas, for example, Lindy's mist, they will never actually expire while you have them or those magical shimmer pots because you're the one activating the mixture, which means you've got, like, 20 years. So, like, don't get me wrong, they will go off, but it takes 20 years. So the idea is, is that you will use it in that 20 years. Um... Which is why they don't actually have to put an expiry on the packaging. What's up? Good morning to you. Um, oh, I'm not having a good day with names. Um, Tian, I said your name wrong. I'm so sorry. Uh, Tanya. No, maybe. I'll get there eventually. And morning, Leanne. So yeah, so that's what we're going to do with the Shimmer Pots. If your Facebook isn't working today, that's okay. We are streaming this on YouTube as well. So... Can hop on either or it's completely up to you guys heads up um i can kind of see youtube comments but i won't be able to see who is commenting on youtube so i might call you bob or something like that and i'm truly sorry um, just kind of the way, way i was raised anyway so here we go so i'm just going to grab out my metallic watercolors they do have a few sequins in them. This is because they get well used. Right. 
So these are the metallic watercolour mop marts. So any techniques that you do with these, you can do with the shimmer pots, magic pots, whatever they're called. Honestly, they have so many names, so many different brands do them. Um, you can also do it with Lindy Mist Powder before it's been activated. So you can decant from the Lindy Mist bottle. Which, like, people don't recommend it because it can get a bit messy. It's kind of like, you know how embossing powder gets everywhere? That's Lindy's Miss Powder on a whole new level. There's a reason why it stays in the bottle. Um, well, hello, Tash. Hello, Karen. Hello, Marlene. So let's get into it today. Um, so I've got a few stencils to do these techniques with, with our metallic watercolours. Um, don't worry, put your sheets in the washing machine. Right. Here we go. Um, yeah. So to do watercolour with a stencil, you can use any paintbrush, but the best sort of ones are the ones with a straight edge at the top. If you use the rounded ones, um, more water will actually seep through underneath the uh, stencil so you want to use your flat tips because they give you more of a straight edge and they're unlikely to slip underneath your stencil so if English is slowly coming to me who knows by the end of it we might be able to make some full sentences so just Adding some water to my pink. Also, if you have any colour suggestions, just let me know. Because this is going to be mostly a stencil colour, which means we're just going to use as many colours as we want. So if you want to see what any of the colours are on the colour palette, just let me know. So I'm just spending a good time mixing it. Because metallic watercolours and the shimmer pots that you're going to use, if you have any in your stash, um, are actually quite transparent. So if you want them to be really dark, you want to add a little bit of water, like one brush worth, and then mix it really well in with what you've got. So then it more becomes like a thick paste texture rather than a liquidy, um, like a thin liquid. Like you normally have with watercolor where you swish it real quick and then you paint with it you want to spend the time just to make sure that it's fully as much pigment as possible. yeah you want to get as much pigment as possible so then that, that it is as strong as possible on your thing and we definitely want to make sure we're doing that with our bottom layers so then they still come through on the top as um we are going to do some a lot of stenciling today so we're just going to come in and we are going to do it all with metallic watercolours, which means that it's going to take a few layers. Here we go. Just putting this one on. Add a bit more water. Oh, there's my father. He's so on today. Also, if I forgot to say hello, hello. Just coming in and we want to make sure that we get a good coverage. I'm just gonna lift this up. So there you go, as you can see. looks pretty cool with the metallics so I'm gonna come over this side and do it again well thanks Leanne so yeah it's a really simple technique if you can you can also do this on like on the back of a page um, 
on like your page backing and cardstock. I wouldn't suggest doing it, well, you could do it on pen and paper. However, you want to make sure it's good quality pen and paper. Some of the brands are really thin. Um, like Kaisercraft and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, my mom's and dad's one would be all good to do this on because it's nice. It's got a good backing to it. It's got a bit of body. But I definitely wouldn't do it on the ones that are like nearly A4 standard thickness because that's just... I'm not going to lie, it will turn glaggy on you. Like, it will just become a heap of mess and, like, have you ever made paper mold before? I have. And lots of the time it was more accidental than what I wanted. So, um, that's what kind of happens when you do watercolour technique on some of the pattern papers. It just turns to mold. Don't get me wrong, it's really cool. You can reshape the paper and all that, but it does take a really long time to dry, even in um, Australia. Uh, well, um, well, in Queensland as well, which is really bizarre because we actually have some good heat. Apart from this week, it's been freezing. I think this is the first time I haven't worn a jumper, and that's because I chucked on the heat of this morning when I woke up, before I went for a swim you know I'm an absolute nutter right so that's our first layer and as you can see we did have some overlap come in but with the metallics the more it actually piles up it gets darker so it has a range to itself so you don't actually have to make a gradient or add another color to get darkness the metallic watercolors and your shimmer pots will do that all for you because of how transparent it is the more pigment you get the actual more difference there is between the two colors, uh, between the colors range. So it could be like really light to super dark. You can get all of that in the one setting. So what you see on your palette, that's the brightest that can come. But when you paint with it, it will be a lot lighter. And so you keep adding more and more and more and more layers. Hello, Lorraine. Right, so let's go in and we're going to add another stencil and then we might have to dry it. This is going to be quite a simple pay, um, quite a simple class because I kind of want to get this technique down pat so you guys can use a range of mediums like your shimmer pots, your magic pots and your metallic watercolours as I know sometimes people get a little bit afraid with adding water to their projects because of all the rest of it, don't get me wrong. Um, I've had a few of those moments recently because, uh, don't get, um, bit of an update on my life. So my real estate agent, yes, they got rid of the mold on my roof, but then the mold came back, but it's no longer on the roof. It's now on the walls and, uh, I started going on my furniture. So I had to give them a couch and a few other things, um, so far I've had to chuck out like 20 artworks because of my apartment. Um, I'm sick of it. So, yes, I understand why people are scared of adding water to their projects if that happens and all the rest of it. But you just need to make sure it dries immediately. That is all. And that you don't live in an apartment infested with mold. Pretty simple. The two criteria. And I'm, I'm almost definite that all of you ladies and gents... Don't live in a mouldy apartment. And saying that, if you do, try and move out. It's not a safe environment to live in. So yeah, super fun. Oh no, Tanya. I know what it's like. I'm so sick of it. I even had to chuck out a full art journal. Because it was leather bounded. It was like all of. Um, so like I have particular journals with particular things. Like I have a mental health journal. And a reflection journal. Which no one really gets to see those two. But yeah the one that I had throughout. Was the one that had all my mental health paintings in it. So. Um, I, while I was um, 
back in Gladstone, I, it was already getting really full, so I bought a new one for it. But um, luckily I did because, yeah, I had to go. It does get on everything, everywhere. So now we're coming in with the purple. And we want to make sure, because this stencil is a lot more detailed and it has a few more finicky bits to it, we want to make sure that it doesn't get too much underneath it. And how you do that is you actually hold it and the key points as I move my stencil accidentally. Well, oh, that rose is all it's going to do now. So yeah, you want to make sure because it doesn't move too much or oh, lift up. So there's that one. And if it does get underneath, don't worry, the pattern still stays because of what the metallic watercolors do. You shouldn't be too worried about it if you're light handed. You get this real down pat easily. But yeah, we actually still have some of this in stock. I was very surprised tell you the truth because I do check up on the stencils because I know that I probably should only use stencils that you guys can get your hands on so mom and dad do a really good job of keeping sure that they keep like the essentials in stock like there's always a running script and um, a chevron and all that but yeah the flowers are still in stock it's amazing I went back and I was like oh my gosh would you look at that? Still in stock. So now, what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to make a few bits and pieces of different. So I'm just going to grab one of my oil pastels, my pink one. And, or maybe, yeah. So it's a very similar tone to my water, my let my words catch up to the pink watercolor that I used and I just want to do that because I want to make some light patterns not too much it's just to get a bit here and a bit there going I know that hole to 100 can be a real scary thing, but it's actually quite good. As long as you don't have to pay so much, it's great. Right, and then we're going to come up here. I'm going to do a bit here, and I'm just going to come in, and I know we said we're going to mainly do this with metallic watercolor, but I, I will. I'm just adding some resistance, so because we still need a little bit more depth, I think. Okay. Mm. Yes, so it's an oil pastel, which is why it draws over the watercolor so easily. So um, oil pastels are really good to use with watercolor. You can add them in, in any layer and basically make uh, essentially what's called a mask. So is where you have some bits showing and some bits not showing. Could you add a green, please? Oh, yeah, I could add a green. Um, just give me a second. Um, so with the watercolor, and it also makes it have a little bit more depth and it gives you that space that you can work around it. So here we go. So you just want to come in and you really, oh, there's that one. So I'm just going to blend out 
my oil pastel pink a little bit and this is just to make it a little bit more pastel like the metallic watercolor which is kind of a pun there unintended but still kind of a pun go so you just add a little bit of white to your um where you've basically already drawn your colored oil pastel and what happens is is it smooths it out and blends it to make a gradient just kind of what we want because this will be a really watercolory page and we will add some green in a second we'll just get in there with my oils because I just want this bit here to be a bit more prominent, I think. What type of green are you thinking, Tanya? Can I ask? Anything Pacific? Anyone want a Pacific type of green? We could do either like a real olivey type one, or we could do like a neo green. Anyone got any suggestions? You can add some other color suggestions, and like I said, we can add as many colors to this as we want because it'll be mostly metallic watercolor. And this to add to blend out where we've put some white over there, we're just going to add some white to this section here. A minty green. Right. Very specific, but we can do that. So a mint type green and a blue. Oh, okay. Just a few options there we can work with. Right, okay, so a mint type green and a blue. Right, we can do that. That's a colour. Right, oh, look at that. I think that's kind of a minty colour. It's called Kermit, but I will classify that as a mint. Nearly. And a blue. We might try the Smurf blue. We're meaning to try it out. Oh, sky blue. Mm, that might make it a little bit too pastely. Like, don't get me wrong, pastely is nice, but we still want to make sure that things have an up and down moment. So, yeah. We want to try and make sure we still have a bit of a balance. So if you do add more than three colours, you want to have that range, like complementary colours, that adds the depth. Like you don't want it all to be pastel if you have six colours on there because it's going to look very, I can't think of any other word except from beige. But so you want some vibrancy when you add more than four colours, even if it's only one of the colours, you want a little bit of depth between your range so we still we already have two real pastel ones and by adding the mint green that will also accommodate for that pastelness you want to make sure then that the blue has that kick that it adds that depth to it if that makes sense sorry i just went into like a whole bunch of color theory that you probably don't really want to hear about anyway real moments there so What we might do is just thinking we might come in and add oh it's good here oh interesting the top came off that one I will deal with that in a second that's probably because it's got some glue in there 
because I used my Kermit the other day. It just had glue in it. And I didn't think to clear out the lid. I will deal with that later. Well, that's excellent to hear. You're definitely coming to the right place then, um, hopefully. I like to think I'm going to paint here, shall we? Right, so we're just going to use our blending foam things. Now, I worked out that these things do wash out. They do. If you put paint on them though, you need to do it immediately. Okay, so the foamy things, they do wash. Don't get me wrong, you can't be like rigorous and go and soak them for three hours and then give them the good old like CPR treatment with cleaning. You know how you give some stamps like good CPR cleaning? Can't do it with your foamies. You've got to more gentle. Like it's a baby. You know? So we're just going to come in. And I'm doing these dots in acrylic. Just so then it gets that a bit more of a medium type of a kick and has kind of a like a blocking between the two mediums so then it doesn't mix too much with the watercolors because if we did use the metallic watercolor with the green it would make mud because um, it would mix with the purple as it's basically the same medium. So when it overlaps on top of each other, the pigments would actually mix, which means that you would um, either A, have to put Sealy down before you put on your, before you put on your green layer or put it on with a different type of medium or a different type of watercolour. With the hill on the end. Okay, so the flat ones are better for ink pads, if that makes sense. So your flat foam ones are really good for ink pads because um, while you remove the ink, you're also re-inking it, technically speaking. Unfortunately, not so great for paints and if you're heavy-handed because you get that hard edge. By the one that has like the hilly bit, or your general normal blending brushes that you can get, which mine are still in the bathroom from last week because I had to give them a good soak. Um, they, it doesn't matter what medium you use them with. They wash out. You can use them basically in anything. Some of mine have had matte medium on them and they still work, which is a whole new version of that. But yeah, of just heavy dutiness, but. It's very much, you got to keep, where am I going with this? Um, so yeah, the flat ones are good for ink pads, but if you're going to use them with paints, I do suggest the ones with the rounded tops or the normal just blending brushes that you've got or makeup sponges. You will be surprised of how well makeup sponges actually work in art. And I know a lot of you think that's a waste, but um, I don't wear makeup. However, my older brother gives me a hint at my birthday each year. He um, he always buys me makeup sponges. <laughs> he knows I like, get use out of them and all the rest of it, but while he's at it, he gives me a hint that I should probably start to learn how to use it because apparently one day I'll need the skill. And I have no doubt that he is absolutely correct. But while I don't have to wear makeup, I'm not gonna. Because I'm that type of person that just does that. So that's who I am. You can tell that my older brother and I come to blows about my general lack of enthusiasm for that type of stuff. But he understands me, which is nice. 
So here we go. We're going to come in and we're going to use our metallics next with a stamp. And I think we're going to go with the... Hmm... With the yellow. Yeah, I just don't see the point in that. Exactly. But yeah, no. Makeup sponges, they work a treat with stencils. I do not know how much they uh, cost. Because, like I said, I get them as gifts. It's kind of like um, most of my closet. Because, you know, that's how it works. So, here we go. And I will lift, you, lift it up to show you where I'm stamping my little ferny bits. In pieces what you want to be is you want to be a little bit careful because the stamp is so thin you don't want to overload it it is okay if you do you can just get some paper towel stamp all the extras off you can even use that paper towel then as or you could do it on some tissue paper that way then you can use it as a collage material later um, however you want to make sure that you keep it nice with a thin coating on top to make sure you get the pattern and not just like a splotch on the page. So, like don't get me wrong, splotches work. However, there's some things that if it splotches on the page, it might look a little bit... Let's call it the word weird. So we go. Oh, dropped it a little bit. So it won't be as prominent as probably what you're thinking it might be, but it will work a lot. I am about to lift this. We will have to come back in, I think, and add some more pink in and ow, purple back in a little bit in a few of the areas, but that's okay. So I'm just going to lift it to show you. I don't know if you can see the yellow ferns real well. There we go. So that's yellow ferns. And as you can see, the different layers and thicknesses of the materials, actually, well, the mediums, gives quite a nice effect however the watercolor can be um it will move if you do put matte medium over it and so will your shimmer pot paints i am going to show you that with using some gauze just to give you quite an like an example of that you will need to seal an art, um, a watercolor artwork before you put collage on it if you don't want it to move a little bit 
Um, I'll give you a bit of an example up in this area here where we haven't done too much. I don't really want to come in and do it here where we've done a lot of layers because that's going to get real muck. Um, which is why we're going to do it in the area where we've only really kept one colour. So I've just got my gauze and I'm going to stretch it out a bit. Yes, I found my gauze. I've done a bit of clean up of my area because I've got a friend coming to my house today. It's like my first house guest ever, by the way. Um, that isn't family. Uh, she, she's kind of important. Um, and then, so we're just going to come in and move that a little bit. And make that one. I thank you. And then sorry, I'm just making it a little bit holy because I want it to blend out into our patterns as much as possible. Um I just don't want it to be like a full on straight edge like here is where it cuts on and off a bit more grungy that kind of matches the aesthetic of the watercolor that we've done so i'm just coming in and i'm going to put some matte medium straight to the page hang up gel matte medium a tube that doesn't have any paint on it it's a real miracle there we go well, it did have paint on it, it was just removed. Yeah, so more like a spider's web, exactly. It just gives it really good coverage. I actually remember I went through this phase where all my artworks had um, gauze in them. And one of my uni lecturers started questioning it. So I went over to letter stickers. Um, yeah. What can I say? Like, I just, it was kind of to pull the um, woo out of him, but he didn't see it as very funny. I'm not vindictive at all. Right, here we go. Um, so we're just putting down our thing. We, you just got to be a little bit mindful of the gauze because you have made it like a spider. You got to keep track of all the little hairs because you want them to stick down, especially in an art journal. Don't get me wrong, if it's on a painting and there's a few hairs not stuck down, no real biggie because the painting's just going to be stuck on a wall realistically and move probably only about 10 times in its life. Um, if it is the average type of painting, don't get me wrong, I don't know how many, how many times people move. But um, when you're in an art journal, it tends to be flipped through a lot and has a little bit more of a wear and tear on it. So you definitely want to make sure all your little hairs are stuck down no matter what. And I think I've actually stuck one of my own hairs in there, like one of my hair hairs. So not intentional, but... It is what it is. Right. There we go. So I'm just going to lift that up. So as you can see, with the matte medium, it has smudged a bit of the pigment off. Like you still get the general pattern. However, it becomes more like a glaze of the colour there, of the original colour, because it mixes in with the matte medium as they are the same type of base. So they're both water-based products, which is why they mix in together really well and make that sort of a glaze. So if you don't want that to happen, I suggest that you either wait a couple of days after it dries, it tends to become solid dry then, or you conceal it during the process with... Um, 
actually a light, a very lightly painting matte medium over it and then waiting for it to dry and then adding collage. However, you still have that very fine chance that it is going to glaze. So it all just depends on how you want that contrast to work. Right. And saying in which, we need to come back with our pink. So. Just going to grab some of our pink again. I'm just adding in a few spots. And this is before we add the blue and the white in. So I might just come in and add the pink. Yes, because watercolour will always reactivate normally, um, depending on how dry it is and how you dry it. So if you wait for it to dry naturally in about six days or so, the watercolour will be completely non-activated available. So it means that it won't activate at all. Whereas as soon as you apply acrylic and dries, it's you, you're better off painting over it. If you don't like it. So... Those are realistically your options. Whereas watercolour, you do have a couple of days where you can go in and take some of it off. Now that we've got that there. Um, and then so. do some fakey writing. I am going to give that uh, just a few seconds to draw a little bit. while we waited it for a few seconds for it to dry. Ooh. Yeah. And that medium is still a little bit wet. Sorry about that one. So this is just to add a few patterns in. Oh, I am definitely going grey. Oh, uh, no. So it's a uh, mat fine liner and I've just put it through matte medium so I'm gonna have to there we go um so it's a matte metallic fine liner I'm just using it to do a few patterns yeah I accidentally ran it in the wet patch of matte medium not a smart move but you know it's all good I've just fixed the nim surprisingly I've broken that many I've had nearly 
a lot of broken pants before, so I can go and fix it pretty easily. And then what we're going to come and do is add our blue in. to grab some of the blue and Just Like I said, this is just to give it some depth to the layers. So it's not too much. And where the gauze is, I'm running my fingers really lightly along so then we can highlight where the texture is. It's not like a real coating, it's just a bit more of like a, a few highlights. And then what we want to do is we want to come in with some of our white. So I'm just going to grab our white here. And close up my paintbrush. Right. Adding a few bits and pieces of the white in. Well, you can't really see that right this very moment, but I'll lift it up in a second to show you. And it's just to blend in where we haven't really done a lot on the page because we still have a lot of white space in this layer, which is nice. It gives your eyes a bit of room to kind of breathe. Some of our pages can get really, really Right, which is nice, but sometimes it is good to do a few things with a bit of space. Go. And then what we want to do is we just want to add hmm, it needs something. Give me one <laughs> second to find what I'm looking for. Yes, right, 
I found it. I found what I was looking for. So what we want to do is we want to come in with our Lindy's and use it how we would use it if it was this a shimmer pot. So this one here is activated so I don't have to add any water. And then there we go, just got like a few bits on. It really is. You just gotta be confident. It's one of the few things I'm confident at. Painting. It's great go and have a try and you know if you don't like what happens put it to one side leave it a week come back and paint right over it I've had plenty of artworks that I don't like not many of them get shown um, You know, if it is going through like an ugly phase for you, don't worry. The best paintings do. Because then it's had like a full life. It's like it had like a full life cycle to get where it needs to be. And then. Uh, this orange is Boom. It's the, it's very fluoro. Oh, that's excellent to hear, Sandy. I can't wait to see what you guys create. Um, I know I don't come back and comment until like Monday. It's just because I do live a very secluded life on the weekends. <laughs> I tried having, I tried having minimal human contact on the weekends. Just because my job is very retail based and um, I just want to paint. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to a party tonight and I'm considering not going and just painting. But I will because it's important to have friends. Apparently. Right, here we go. Um, I actually suggest with the Art by Marlene ones, buy like a few different colours, especially the colours that you don't think you're going to use. Like I brought a really bright a bright yellow the first time. I didn't really use it, um, that colour before I had it, but these work, work just like pearl drops. So buy colours that you would use as pearl drops. Not, not essentially colours that you would use as paints, but colours that you would use as pearl drops and glitters because you can use them for glossy accents and all that type of stuff. Or not glossy accent. You know those glossy accent 
bubble things that you like peel off the plastic sheeting and then you put it down like bling and stuff that's what you can use it for right so let me lift this up to show you guys so this is what we have created so in the last few minutes we did add some um, acrylic paint just to get some depth in there some contrast it was an all right page before we added the different colors and depth in there and like the orange and the blue and the white however by adding it it does take it to that next level and sometimes it it, it can't be scary to play around before it already looks really nice but definitely worth it in the end so that there is our art journal class for today thank you all for coming um i will be putting photos up of this up for you guys um we don't have a technique set for next week we will be back on saturday oh thank you so whatever you want to watch let me know whatever you would like to learn just let me know and i'll come through and teach it uh this weekend this weekend was the shimmer pots uh, which is basically metallic watercolors in little pots so that's why we did the stenciling technique at first and how you can mix those with the different materials so if you do have anything in your stash that you want to learn how to use and you don't know how to please text me i answer pretty much immediately um i might not come back with an like a proper answer answer until three days later sorry sandy this is the answer to the question from wednesday um but we do come in and i do come in and answer my questions eventually i promise so if you have anything that you'd like to learn let me know if not um i choose the technique that morning or i'll put out a post on the friday being like what do you want to learn anyway thank you all for coming I shall see you all next week. Stay safe and have a great week. Bye.